welcome to the session about flowcharts <coughs> so flowchart is the graphical representation so it's it's a first step we make in understanding <coughs> a particular process so if we have a description so if we previously we had a look at pseudocodes we have a set of instructions or something like that english phrases with indentation and here we are looking at flowcharts which provides a visual illustration so it's a visual illustration with standard uh, icons with combinations of shapes lines and text so flowcharts provide a visual illustration a picture of the steps the process undergoes to complete complete its assigned task so flowchart it's a visual representation let's move forward so we have several symbols in flowcharts so in our pseudocode example we knew that we have input we have to uh, start it we have to have input and we have to have some uh, arithmetic operations processes and you have to display it to the output so let's see how we can do it with symbols so we there are six symbols commonly used so symbol one which is available here <coughs> is the terminal it indicates the start and end of the program so the symbol one which is here depicted in right start and end of the program so symbol 2 which is input and output use for the input and output it is IO operations input and output so that is symbol 2 symbol 3 is the process an internal operation so any process taking place for example if you are doing calculating the average calculating the sum those kind of things can be there so number four predefined process a name subroutine subroutine we'll look at it in future sessions and number five very important decision making for example in a program there might be several decisions you have to make so for example <coughs> you enter a number if it's greater than 100 you might have to have another requirement if it's less than 100 you might have another requirement for example out of 100 if you have mark is more than 70 you might get a grade so in your the, when the mark is entered you have to see whether the mark is greater than 70 or not in order to avoid the a grade so decision making is really important so you have the <coughs> number one sign number five sign decision making and branching number six is the connector so jump from one point in the flowchart to another sometimes the flowchart is big you can use the connector so we have various arrows to control so control structures in an algorithm sequence selection and iteration sequence is the set of instructions one after the other selection is the different the decision making so decision making is the selection as the name says and iteration is you have to do with a particular task again and again until you have a condition so we look at iterations later and selection in this session we'll have a look at sequence <coughs> sequence is a set of instructions that are logically ordered so that are in a logical order one instructions after the other statement a statement b statement c so one after the other there's a sequence see sequence is a set of instructions that are logical that are in a logical order so for example <coughs> if you are calculating the average you might have a set of instructions in a particular order so sequence you have to be very careful one instruction after the other so let's have an example calculating years and days write an algorithm to convert the input minutes into number of years and days so you get a huge number which, which is like minutes a particular minutes 527,040 so equal to 366 days. 
so output should be for example one year and one day 366 days so if you enter a particular input which is the minutes you have to show the number of years and days so this is the problem let's see so we have a, something like this pseudocode read minutes from the user so these are the set of instructions calculate the years as minutes divided by 60 into 24 into 365 so if you do the simple math you can see when you get a number which is minutes how can you convert it to years and days so calculate the days as minutes so minutes divided by 16 to 24 remained 365 so and finally you display the years and days so let's see how we can do with the flow chart so we have to use the sign one symbol one that we use which is the star so any flow chart you should have start and end so you can see the symbol for start and end start at the beginning end at the end so for input output you have this symbol which you have get minutes for input output you have this symbol and for calculating years you have another symbol and for display output you have the same symbol for input and output you have the same symbol get minutes and display years and days you have the same symbol so if you cross check so terminal start and end of the program we have the first sign for input output we have this shape symbol number two and for process we have symbol number three so we can see these same things are used here so we have start and end symbol number one and you have to get minutes so that means input output you have symbol number two and you have to calculate the years equals minutes divided by 24 into 16 into 365 so days minutes divided by 24 into 60 remainder 365 so you have the process you have that symbol for that which is a rectangle and you have another input here input output here so in for input output we, we both we use the same symbol so display years and days and at the end so this is a simple example of flowchart it's like gra it's the graphical representation so these symbols if you use it we can make it a standard so a particular person reads a document prepares the pseudocode and have a flowchart so once you have a flowchart <coughs> if you follow the same standard the another person also can read the flowchart and use it for example if you are working in a team one person might be doing the requirement analysis so software engineering it's also it's a team uh, it's the projects are done in teams so usually a team works in a project so teamwork is very important so the requirement analyst will look at the deployment and have a pseudocode and maybe a flowchart like this so the developer might look at the flowchart and implement so we should follow the same uh, standard symbols therefore anyone can understand for example if you use your own symbols the next person has to study the symbols to read what is there therefore we have a set of standard symbols here so flowchart it's a graphical illustration so we have various signs start and end symbol one symbol two for get minutes and display for input output and we have a for process we have the calculation here so that's about uh, flow charts and we discuss sequence here so that's the end of this session so till you get familiar with these symbols you can spend some time with the symbols otherwise for, if you are studying this for the first time you might be uh, confused with these various kind of symbols so if you practice this again and again you will get used to these symbols so anyway we have only six symbols can have a look so we have terminal input output and process so those are the main ones we used so we look at decision making in future sessions so this is the flow chart